It was a coordinated protest spanning three states, animal rights activists blocking peak hour traffic and storming abattoirs in the dead of night to chain themselves to machinery. Animal rights activists are staging protests this morning, invading farms across the country in what's being dubbed the biggest animal rights protest the world has ever seen. Today's coordinated demonstrations all align with the first anniversary of a controversial documentary. On the streets of Melbourne, they banded together. Vegan vigilantes chained to the cause. Our climate is dying. Trillions of animals every year are dying, are being tortured every day. I'm here to raise awareness about that and I'm here to say that it's time to take action. Police taking action of their own and carting them away. These protests obviously garnered a lot of media attention in Australia and some are saying they are hurting the cause. They argue that pissing people off by disrupting their morning commute isn't winning anyone over and only serves to drive people further away. I wanted to illustrate why this is not the case and explain why nonviolent direct action is not only extremely effective, but fundamental to bringing about social change. I personally used to hold this view as a vegan. I thought that DXE protesters were just making vegans look bad and turning people off. This was before I understood the intention behind these actions and the historical precedent. This article sums up the point of protests perfectly. The author clarifies that he is not vegan, but sympathizes with the protesters. Regardless of where you stand on vegans, meat-free diets, or animal rights, you need to consider what a protest actually is before you get super offended. Number one, Inconvenience and disruption is the nature of a peaceful protest. If you would not apply your anti-vegan protest arguments to the Million Man March, the Arab Spring, or to any other peaceful protest where people were inconvenienced and traffic was shut down, then your argument here is moot. Blocking roads, chaining to objects, all of these things are 101 for protests. Number two, saying they're shoving views down people's throats is stupid. Again, like any form of protest throughout history, that's what protest is. It's looking at a broken system and confronting people about it. If you hate what the protesters are protesting, then fine. But don't hate the way they're protesting. It's peaceful and disruptive. It's exactly how it should be done. Number three, confronting people doesn't work is also a stupid thing to say. Confronting people perpetuating a broken system is the only thing that works. This stretches back to the first slave revolts in the Roman Empire. This is how a protest works. Number four, stop saying it's inconveniencing innocent people. The people being inconvenienced, by and large, are the oppressors. Most people eat meat, and that is the behavior they were protesting. The Arab Spring probably pissed a few people off in those countries, too. Revolution equals an inconvenience to people doing the oppressing. And number five, check your double standards. Regardless of where you stand on veganism, this protest was just like any other protest, and any disproportionate opposition you feel is because you are being protested against. Welcome to Cognitive Dissonance. The documentary film Dominion is described as a look at the legal standard practices employed daily in Australian farms and slaughterhouses that remain unknown to most consumers. Chris Delforce from the Dominion Network said he expected members of the public would be frustrated that their day had been disrupted. But at the end of the day, when people see what these animals are going through, a small delay in their day doesn't really compare. This is a climate emergency and an environmental emergency. To those who claim a disruption like this will backfire and cause more harm than good, I'd ask you to provide evidence. Many of our greatest heroes are lawbreakers. Susan B. Anthony, Rosa Parks, Mahatma Gandhi. Illegal activism is in fact a time-honored tradition. Some philosophers have argued that it is not only acceptable, but even obligatory in some cases, to violate the law in order to resist injustice. If animal agriculture is indeed a massive systemic injustice, which it is, 
then I submit vegan activists can reasonably claim to be a part of a long tradition of morally justifiable civil disobedience. I think we're aware of the issues, but why have a protest and disrupt everybody on their orderly progress to work? There's many other avenues to do it. There's different times to do it. I mean, why can't they do it on the corners of the road and allow people to have a thoroughfare? The media has a long history of portraying protests in a negative light and peaceful activists as militant extremists. This is why studying history is so important. We can apply knowledge of past social movements to current events and recognize patterns of human behavior. This is an extremely urgent issue. Animal agriculture is incredibly unsustainable, and we are simply running out of time to act on climate change. And the longer it takes to achieve animal liberation, the more animals will suffer. History has shown that forcing the mainstream to confront systems of injustice expedites progress. Martin Luther King was often criticized for the poor timing of his demonstrations and the legality of his tactics. Nonviolent direct action seeks to create such a crisis and fosters such a tension that a community which has constantly refused to negotiate is forced to confront the issue. It seeks so to dramatize the issue that it can no longer be ignored. My citing the creation of tension as part of the work of the nonviolent resistor may sound rather shocking, but I must confess that I am not afraid of the word tension. I have earnestly opposed violent tension, but there is a type of constructive nonviolent tension which is necessary for growth. I must confess that over the past few years I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride towards freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action. I share this all to say that it is impossible to stand up for the rights of the oppressed without facing massive resistance from the mainstream. Another thing to be aware of is the way the media attacks the messenger. They love to portray the farmers as victims of vegan aggression. They claim the vegans are attacking farmers and sending death threats. This particular news station did a good job highlighting this behavior on the other side. It's prompted fury from the public and a torrent of death threats. I'm definitely getting death threats. I've had 650 message requests of farmers and truck drivers messaging me saying that they're going to find me and murder me. Hundreds more are publicly abusing the 25-year-old in comments online. You really are a narrow-minded peanut. You make me want to kill animals just to annoy you, and I love animals. Go get a real job, you useless oxygen thief. You're idiot. If you don't like meat, don't eat it. It's as simple as that. When you take all of these things into consideration, I think it's fair to say that these protesters fulfilled their purpose. Again, the point of protesting is to draw attention to the issue, communicate the severity of the problem, and empower people to take collective action. Podcast host Katrina Fox told journalists, Last year, when Dominion was released, there were protests, but the media coverage was non-existent. This year, they decided to just go all out, and the media coverage was everywhere. And yes, it was quite negative because the media likes controversy and conflict. But there's going to be a certain percentage of people who are willing to look beyond the headlines, start asking questions, and find out why people are doing this. It's a wake-up call. She admitted it may have stirred some Aussies up the wrong way, but it was a small price to pay. When we look at all social justice movements in the past, none of those have come about as a result of nice, polite activism. There's disruption, and that's necessary. Australian TV and radio host Michelle Lari admitted on Facebook that the protesters got to her. Maybe I'm the only one, but today's vegan protest totally worked on me. I was stuck in traffic in my car, late for work, and all I could think was, they're right, I've got to stop eating meat. I congratulate the activists who've worked so hard to get this country talking about animal rights today. This is anecdotal, of course. However, 
We have numerical data showing that the protests had a positive impact. There was a huge spike in views for the documentary in the 48 hours that followed. Lastly, I'll say that personally, actions like this inspire the hell out of me, and I hope to be involved in something as epic here in the U.S. Media attention allows for calm, rational voices like James Aspie to be broadcasted to mainstream audiences. Yes, hi James. Look, um, Hello. I want to know how would you feel if I came into a vegan restaurant or sat in front of a mm-hmm. vegan restaurant or one of your vegan protests with my barbecue and cooked up my rack of lamb, cooked up my steak and cooked up my pork. How would you feel about that? How do you think that you have a right a God-given right to go into someone mm-hmm. else's property and to say what you want to say. That is wrong and inconsiderate of you. That's a, that's a great question. What gives us the right? And look, we don't want to go onto these farms. We wouldn't go onto these farms well, if you go. weren't also... If, uh, well, just let me finish my answer. If you weren't impinging on the rights of these animals, we don't, we don't want to make a big fuss about anything, but ultimately it's about the victims. And from the victim's point of view, something needs to be done. So if you come into a vegan establishment, we're just cutting up vegetables, basically nothing's happening. If we go to a, a, a farm or if we go to even a steak restaurant, for example, they are the bodies of murder victims. They have been slaughtered and screamed and suffered and terror. You know, we are inflicting terror that we would not ever want on anybody, on any human. We're talking about throat slitting. We're talking about gas chambers. We're electrocuting them to death. This is this is horrific violence James, that should quickly, not be illegal or quickly, condoned. And, and you make you make a very valid point. And just quickly, I just want to say, um, Jess, thank you for that. Um, that one thing I think a lot of us do live in denial of is everyone's like, oh, but all of our animals in Australia um, are humanely killed. And I think we need to make a decision as adults. And I eat meat, but we need to make a decision Mm -hmm. that when we eat this meat, we are accepting the fact that animals in Australia are not all humanely killed and we are living in denial. Can you answer that in one sentence? That's a a really great point. One sentence. Don't talk too long. There is no such thing. There's no such thing as humane slaughter. Humane means to show compassion. You can never, never compassionately kill somebody, kill an animal who does not want to die. It is a, just a euphemism. It is an oxymoron. They're, they're, it's just a way to make consumers feel better about our choices, but ultimately it is not humane. There's not a humane way to do it. James, and what, so, you are so yeah, passionate. Okay. Thank you. No, no, no. I don't want to wrap you up, but we've had a really big chat. We wanted to give you a platform I've got to, say to be one able to give your thing, opinion. Very quick, one more sentence. And you have, and you've you, done you, it very you, passionately, and thank you so much. Go watchdominion.com. Watchdominion.com. Yo, how when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them. When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, no, no me now. How when me eat them, I wonder when me yam. When me tell them, say that I'm a vegan man. How when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them. When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, no, no me now.